momentous occasion around here, friends. I am putting an apron on. <laughs> Why? Because I like this dress a lot and we are going to be pitting cherries to make a gorgeous fresh cherry salsa to go over grilled zucchini. It is summertime magic here and um, cherries don't mess around. <laughs> and there's really no way to avoid them spitting at you while you're pitting them. So it's an apron day. Um, let's build the salsa in a glorious, gorgeous bowl like this one. Let's talk about all the reasons we love cherries. We like sweet and tartness, obviously one of my favorite uh, flavor combinations. We love juiciness. We love how versatile cherries are. They really are the fruit that goes so beautifully in crumbles and pies um, as a compote over yogurt or ice cream, um, made into a beautiful savory sauce over steak. Uh, you can like simmer cherries with a little red onion and wine and a little butter. Woo, it's beyond. We should do that. Um, or you can do what I'm doing here, which is to make a fresh cherry salsa that is going to have all the sweetness and juiciness of our cherries brought together with heat from a green serrano chili, um, lime juice, a shallot, fresh cilantro, and we're gonna use that to make grilled squash, grilled summer squash, which you are going to have in crazy excess amounts over the summer, into a grilled main course masterpiece or side dish, honestly, a beautiful side dish, but sometimes I like to make vegetables the stars and uh, this is definitely a plate that could do just that. So I am quickly working through these cherries using this cherry pitter, which I own because my kids are obsessed with cherries and with olives, so it makes sense for me. But if you don't have a cherry pitter, you can actually do um, a cool trick that I've seen online is that you can actually take like an empty soda bottle and um, just put the cherry right on top and use a metal straw to push the seed right out and it collects the seed in the base of the bottle. So it's like a twofer, genius. Um, all right, that looks like enough cherry sweet. Let me just show you the knife method so that if you don't have a cherry pitter or a metal straw, you can still do this at home. Um, grab a knife. I look like you might not wanna meet me in a dark alley at night, but the apron came in handy until then. Okay, so get yourself a knife and sort of the way you would remove a pit from an olive, you would just either, it depends. Sometimes the method I'll show you works really well, sometimes not, and I'll show you a second method you can use. So you'll just slice in half and obviously you get one half that's perfect and then the other side, you just kind of have to get your thumb in there and pop the seed out. Delightful. Another option and this is a little bit messier and you lose some of the juice, which is unfortunate, but this is what you do with olives. You, squ you squash it and then the um, pit pops right out. But you make a mess. So use one of the 47 other methods we talked about. <laughs> Should I leave the apron on, guys? I think it's working. <laughs> Roughly two cups of pitted cherries there. And we are going to quickly make the rest of this salsa. None of the rest of it is as dangerous as what we just went through. I have a beautiful shallot that I'm going to quickly mince. You know, sometimes raw onion and salad can be a little overwhelming. I find that the delicate onioniness of the shallots go really well in this salsa, but I will say you will like it better if you take the minute to really precisely and finely mince your shallot. Cause you want like little pops of oniony flavor, not you know, big mouthfuls. Just discard the core, because that can be where the bitterness creeps in. Um, you know, half a shallot may be enough, because this is supposed to be a balanced, beautiful salsa. It does not need to be overwhelming with garlic or onion flavor. So let's start with half a shallot. I can always add more if I want, but that looks good. Um, let's get some heat going on. Serrano chilies, lovely bright green pop of heat and color. I'm just gonna do thin ringlets on these guys into our bowl. Look at already the color palette in there, phenomenal. Let's do one more chili, why not? Live on the edge. Juice of a lime. If you find like your citrus is not giving it up, take a fork and jam it into the center and it will really help to loosen up each of those little pods and give you what you need, as much of the juice as 
you will ever get out of sometimes very stingy citrus that lime can be. Fresh pulls of cilantro. There's, I'm sorry, this is just too pretty to ignore. All that vibrant color. And then once you have gotten sort of those outermost leaves, which are gonna be the most lettuce-like and lovely, then I'm gonna take these tender stems at the top and just put a tight mince on these so that we get some of their texture and boost of additional flavor, but not in a way that provides like a distracting something to chew on, just a lovely little boost of additional texture. A little bit of flaky salt on top, a little bit of olive oil to glisten it all up. Okay, let's toss it all together, see where we are. Oh my gosh. Can this just be soup? Can we just decide we are no longer making salsa? We are now making cherry cilantro serrano soup. Yum. Mmm. Holy wow. Those serranos are very spicy. The cherries though, my gosh, so juicy and sweet to balance it out. The fresh zingy herbiness of the cilantro and the lime. Mm. What the heck? Yes, love you. Okay, so now for our summer squash. They look like yellow zucchini. Um, you can slice these any way you like. You know, rounds are beautiful, obviously, but I kind of have to say, I love it down the center. I find that they really keep a nice meatiness on them, lots of good texture, even when they get a great serious char on the outside. And I am chopping them on this cutting board because I actually don't mind if they pick up a little bit of that extra flavor from the bit of cilantro that's left behind. Um, in fact, I might even, just to get a little cooked essence of the shallot that I still have half left of, I may mince the shallot up and add it um, onto the squash too. Just may. Well, it seems like a lot. That's like, that's, that seems like plenty. Okay. Um, let's also add some ground cumin. So like a teaspoon of ground cumin on top and a teaspoon of ground coriander. You can pull back on the coriander a little bit if you don't like this flavoring. So maybe half a teaspoon. Um, definitely some more salt on here. Not my gorgeous flaky salt, but just some nice kosher salt going over top and some olive oil. Just enough to get these nice and coated. And then, like I mentioned, let's, why not, we have it. Let's give ourselves little ringlets of shallot just to give our veg even more yummy flavor. And I'm leaving them as ringlets because, look, they probably will burn on the hot heat of the stove, so leaving them a little bit larger actually helps to give them a running head start, but they'll probably still burn. And that's okay, a little charred onion is kind of lovely. Um, okay, give them a quick little massage, get them nice and coated with all that wonderful herby, glossy goodness. Okay, let's make some toasted pepitas. Um, AKA pumpkin seeds that have been toasted with a little olive oil and salt in our case. I'm gonna add maybe a little bit more than a third of a cup of um, pumpkin seeds to a clean pan with about a teaspoon of olive oil and a little pinch of salt to help them get lovely and flavorful. And then you just kind of want to toss them around in here um, and let them start to sizzle and pop. And this is just making a lovely, nutty, crunchy topping for our veggie dish. Pumpkin seeds, seeds in general, but pumpkin seeds in particular, are just powerhouses of nutrition, in addition to adding wonderful flavor and crunch. Um, pumpkin seeds are particularly high in zinc, which is supposed to be very good for the immune system. Lots of different minerals, good for your skin. So yeah, enjoy your pepitas. Oh, they're not ready yet. <laughs> Just, you'll hear. You'll hear them snapping and crackling and popping and then we'll know. Meanwhile, I got my grill plate good and greased. Here are the most important things to remember when you are grilling, whether you're doing it inside with a grill plate like I am here or outside on your grill. It's summertime, get out there, cook it up. Number one, you want your grill really clean. 
leftover old food residue, et cetera, A, not appealing, B, actually makes it much stickier so that the new food you're trying to cook is more likely to fight you on the grill. Number two, you gotta grease it well. I'm talking take a clean dish towel, rub some olive oil or other you know neutral oil on it and really grease the grates of your uh, pan or your outdoor grill so that it has a nice slick coating. And number three is get it good and hot before you put any food onto it. You need that searing heat to create the crust that then releases from the grill, it makes it really easy for you to pull your food off and, and flip it and enjoy a gorgeous grilled feast. Uh, so yeah, those are the rules. Follow them <laughs> and you will find success at the grill. Okay, pepitas are getting golden brown in places. I heard a couple of the smaller ones start to pop. That is a good, so come closer, come closer, come look. When you have a decent portion of your previously green uh, pumpkin seeds that have turned golden brown and crisp and have this wonderful glossy salted coating, you can take them off to a plate. Try to spread them out into a knot pile. You don't want them to steam as they cool down. Wow, wow, wow. Look at them. Oh my gosh. Glossy, salty, crispy, crunchy. Good for you. What more could you want? Don't lose this pan. It could come in very handy if we need it for the squash to really help achieve that beautiful sear on our pan. I have turned the heat up to high and I'm being patient to let the grill get nice and hot before I put the squash on. Here are these guys. Mm. Delightful. Mm -hmm. I mean, might be one of my favorite dishes to date. I love it. I love every component here. Get a tongs ready and we can test here if anything starts to sizzle with one of our lovely shallots. Why not? It's a good time. All right, lay those down on your grill. And then to help you really achieve incredible char, take the pan that you just did the pumpkin seeds in and use it as a weight to really make sure that the summer squash is getting maximum content with the hot heat of the grill plate. Okay, so remember, we're not gonna fight. If it resists me, I'm gonna let it continue cooking, but it did not resist. Look at that jar. That's what we like. All right, continuing with each of these guys. And honestly, while being outside on a real grill is phenomenal, this grill plate comes in very handy, particularly when uh, you're dealing with vegetables or things that have a tendency to fall through the grates of your grill. There's benefits to both. I'm gonna let this go just another minute or so on this side. I don't want to completely lose the juicy texture on the inside of the squash. I don't want them to fall apart. I just want that gorgeous warmth and sear on each side. It's gonna be so good. These are looking lovely and smoky and charred. They have that great essence of summer on them. Let's go ahead and pull them off. Some of the larger pieces you may wanna leave on a bit longer, but that's what we're looking for. And you can just grab these and stack them high. Wow. Definitely go ahead and give yourself some height on this plate. And if you prefer, you can have the salsa off to the side, but I feel like why bother? Why not scatter it all over? It's where you're gonna want it eventually. Go ahead and ladle over this incredible cherries and serrano, shallot, fresh lime and cilantro. Rivulets of flavor flowing down the squash, unreal. Definitely add some little pockets of salsa around the plate and you can always serve any leftover on the side so people can scoop up more, which we know they're gonna wanna do. Then a sprinkling of our pepitas over top. A tiny little drizzle of olive oil. A tiny little hit of salt, but you really don't need it because the salsa has all the flavor you need already. And behold, my friends, we have made a true summer star. 
grilled summer squash with cherry salsa. Yeah. All right, let's taste this heavenly, healthy summer deliciousness. Um, okay, this is just the squash part. Mmm. Mmm. Still tender, tons of flavor, but wait till we add the salsa. I cannot, cannot get over the combination of flavors here. Okay, now let's add some pepitas, a little crunch, a little crunch, hold on. Literally out of control delicious. The juicy sweetness of these cherries, guys, and they also, they start to warm a little bit over the hot, uh, you know, grilled squash and burst even more. The shallots, the pepitas, the cilantro, the lime, the serrano. I get like such a kick of heat here. Mm. On a hot day, it's crazy. You think it's crazy and insane, but it's counterintuitive. Hot foods actually will help you cool down. So I cannot recommend to you enough to run to your supermarket or your farm stand or your tree in the backyard. Get these cherries, make this salsa, put it on squash or eat it like soup, not to be missed. Bye-bye.